we have a fixed pulley which means the pulley does not rotate along on its center and there is a friction between the thread and the pulley so when the thread will move there is going to be slipping between the pulley and the thread and there is friction also we need to find it's given that the thread starts slipping when the ratio m2 by m1 is eta naught so for a given ratio the thread starts slipping so before that the thread does not does does not slide we need to find the friction coefficient and when m2 by m1 is greater than eta naught then what will be the acceleration of the masses so initially when it just starts slipping then the acceleration must be zero so that's how we will approach the problem because we are assuming the friction to be the acceleration to be zero we are going to balance the forces on the thread so because there is friction the tension on both sides of the thread is going to be different so let's say on the left side it is t1 and right side it is it is t2 so we can write our equations on m1 and m2 so t1 minus m1g is equal to m1a and m2g minus t2 is equal to m2a so from here we get the ratio of t2 and t1 which is this now in the first case like we discussed when the thread just starts slipping then acceleration obviously is going to be zero so we are going to use that but before that let's see what's happening on the rope itself so this difference t1 and t2 is caused because of the friction and the net force on a massless object is always zero so this t2 minus t1 that difference must be the frictional force on this whole thread so that is our approach so let's read a bit and then start resolving it so what we'll, we are going to do is we'll take a small element and on that we are going to equate the net forces to be zero so since thread is massless net force on it on or any part of it is zero so balancing forces on a small element so we have taken this element and we have written forces on it so it's given that uh, m2 is greater than m1 so let's assume that this tension is t plus dt and on the left side it is t and let's say this is at an angle alpha we have taken a small element which subtends an angle d alpha at the center so forces on the right is t plus dt on the left t then there is a normal reaction so let's say it is dn this normal reaction is only on the small element and because it starts slipping the frictional force is going to be maximum and its value is k into dn so these are the four forces on this small element so we are going to equate the forces in the normal direction and in tangential direction and those forces are zero because thread is massless so in normal direction so because of the two tensions it will be t into d alpha by 2 plus because of this force t plus dt into d alpha by 2 is equal to in the opposite direction it is dn so if you have any doubt how we wrote this equation i suggest you just watch problem number 1.92 there i have explained in detail how this standard result of uh, the forces due to tension can be found on a small element so here dt into d alpha will be very small so we can neglect that we can assume it to be zero so what we are left with is t into d alpha is equal to dn now tangentially also forces are balanced so we will write dt cos d alpha by 2 so t and t components will get cancelled and only left is dt and that angle is alpha by 2 so dt cos d alpha by 2 is equal to k into dn so alpha is very small so we can assume this also to be 1 so now we have got our three equations so we can start relating the tension in the thread with the eventual tension at the ends so initially let's take these two so from 2 and 3 we will find out the value of tension so eliminating dn we get by dividing 2 and 3 we get dt by t is equal to kd alpha 
so tension varies from t1 to t2 and alpha varies from 0 to pi so solving that we get e raised to power k pi is equal to eta into g minus a by g plus actually sorry <laughs> so we get t2 is equal to t1 e raised to power k pi and now we can get rid of the ratio of t2 by t1 from this equation and this and we get e raised to power k pi is equal to eta times g minus a by g plus a so eta here is m2 by m1 so i have replaced m2 by m1 with eta now for the first part it's given that the ratio m2 by m1 is eta naught and then it it is just slipping which means eta becomes eta naught and in that case a becomes zero so this equation gets reduced to e raised to power k pi is equal to eta naught so from here we get the value of k which is 1 by k ln eta naught the answer of our first part second part eta is greater than eta naught so we'll put that value of eta here and of course acceleration in that case will be non-zero it will be positive so replacing the value of k here from this we get the value of acceleration in that case in terms of eta naught which will be our answer for the second part so a lot of things in this problem i <laughs> i suggest you just go through it uh, until you get everything which we have discussed <laughs>